Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Laith and you might know me from a YouTube channel called The Social Streamers, where we make a wide variety of grand strategy content. Today, it's my pleasure to be collaborating with Pirates Interactive on a series of five videos to show you the new features of the No Step Back expansion for Hearts of Iron 4. In this first video, we're going to be focusing on tanks, more specifically the tank designer. This feature takes the ethos of the ship designer, but improves upon it, giving you the flexibility to adapt to the situation facing you. The three core aspects of a tank's design are mobility, firepower and armour, forming a sort of rock, paper, scissors when used tactically. But Lath, I hear you cry. I want to make a tank that does damage, dashes into battle and doesn't get destroyed. Well, with the tank designer this is possible, but you run into two other key factors to consider that of cost and reliability. If the Germans have seized much of your industry, a tractor with a gun strapped to it is a lot more useful than a brilliant design that you just simply don't have the resources for. So, with this in mind, let me take you through how to build your tank. First of all, we have the chassis. Here we have the first decision you need to make that sets up the rest of the design. After picking an appropriate chassis, you can then move on to selecting the armor that you'd like to see on your tank. There are three types of armor. Riveted, welded, and cast. These represent the sorts of decisions you'll have to make going forwards, with cast armor being the most durable but also the most expensive, riveted armor being the weakest but cheapest, and welded representing a middle ground. Previously, you could increase the armor rating and create a variant. This system is similar, but now with 20 levels of armor available. You may add up to 5 levels of armor at the start of the game, with the others able to be researched. Hopefully now you have an idea of the trade-offs that must be contemplated. This is a running theme with this designer, as can be further seen with the engines. You have your standard diesel versus gasoline engine, both with their drawbacks and benefits. But if you'd like to be environmentally conscious when turning back the hordes of enemies invading your lands, you can also opt for an electric engine. The final core component without which this is just a mobile bucket is, of course, the main gun. This determines the type of enemy this tank is designed to fight. Is this meant to cut down human targets with a maximized soft attack? Or a machine more suited to tougher opponents? Now we have the fundamentals, we can start to look at the equipment designer as a whole and add the bells and whistles. At the top here, you can add additional modules. For example, I could have a flamethrower as my main gun and then line my tank with a bunch of additional machine guns. Is it practical? No. Is it possible? Yes. And personally, that's what I feel is important here. I'm going to take a second to remind you that the core aim of this feature is flexibility. It offers the ability to change designs and deploy different tanks that have different purposes, and the special modules aspect exemplifies this. I wish I had enough time to take you through each one, but let me pick my favorites. Firstly, we have the amphibious drive module. Note how it allows the amphibious role. Obviously, you can't have an amphibious vehicle that isn't actually amphibious, so if you want a tank to fill a certain niche, it has to be designed for it and not shoot one in. Things like easy maintenance and wet ammunition storage help with reliability. It's all well and good having metal death cavalry, but they're a bit useless if they don't actually function half the time. Note here that the extra reliability with the storage comes with the price tag of increased production. If you're looking to have an impenetrable creature, then small bonuses to entrenchment and armor from dozer blades and armor skirts go a long way. After all, you can just use all the module slots for extra defense. Using all this, you can have a tank core that is as fast as possible, designed to exploit gaps that have been made by heavier tanks that are essentially just railway guns and treads. This offers more tactical options than was previously possible, when you were just limited to heavy tanks, medium tanks and light tanks. However, for those of you who find this a bit overwhelming, or aren't as keen as I am to get stuck in and see if I can attach four radios to one tank, then you can always select this option down here. This generates a design that the AI uses to fit the designated role, saving you the effort of making your own design. Moreover, you can check this box here to automatically upgrade to the latest components researched. Thank you all for watching. Join me next time as I look into the all-important topic of logistics in the No Step Back expansion for Hearts 5 and 4. Also, be sure to subscribe to this channel to make sure you don't miss a thing.